What do you see on your screen? A clear blue sky? Humans existing in peace and harmony? These are what you see as you walk outside the apartment or as you walk outside that house. Now this is what the people of Sudan see. War, carnage, chaos, lies, dance, dance. Fighter jets, living each day like your life can be snatched within the blink of an eye. All the peace, the dancing on TikTok, the lucrative business venture, the blockbuster movie at a cinema, all these things in one mere second can turn into this. Evil is born from love, your love of money, power and influence. Once you get a taste of money in all its abundance, whether it's a million, 100 million, a billion or 100 billion, whatever abundance may be to you. My point is once you feel the power it gives you, all the influence the masses flocking towards you, it messes with your soul, turning good to evil and turning light to darkness. At this very minute, this very moment in a nation called Sudan, populated by over 45 million people, two men have been lost to the appeal of money and the power money brings. They are lost to this evil side of the human nature, raging war and chaos, innocent civilians, all victims of the carnage born of their greed, lives put to a standstill. What these two men are bringing to the nation of Sudan is nothing short of lost lives, suffering and a collapsing economy and unnecessary struggle for power. Monday, May 1, 2023. On one side you have General al Boha with a military force of 200,000 troops. And on the other hand, you have a warlord called Hemeti with a rapid support force of 100,000 paramilitary troops. This is no small skirmish, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking actual war numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Where did all this begin? To understand this story and to understand the struggle of the innocent people of Sudan, let's take a step back in time. Let's visit key points in modern Sudanese history. Economic mismanagement, rising costs of goods, limits on ATM withdrawals, rising fuel prices and dictatorship at the hand of the man you might know who goes by the name of Omar al-Bashir. Omar the dictator, Omar the liberator, Omar the revolutionary, who exactly is Omar al-Bashir? Omar al-Bashir reigned as a military leader in Sudan for three decades. Why do people go to such great length to hold on to power? Is there anything to gain? Is this all worth it? We the powerless suffer at the hands of the power-hungry minority as they paint an illusion of democracy just to appease us. Most of us are in a democratic nation, but we have no say over alliances we make and the wars we fight. Al-Bashir went on to oversee the war in Dafar that resulted in a death toll that was said to be about 10,000 according to the Sudanese government. But many suggest the real numbers are between 200,000 and 400,000, nearly half a million people. So many lives lost due to pointless brutality because of one man trying to hold on to power. Again, we seem to return to that topic of power. The only logical explanation why a human would slaughter nearly half a million people is money, power, and influence. The trail is always found in the money, but this is just me speaking my mind. March 2009. Al-Bashir became the first sitting head of state to be indicted by the International Criminal Court for allegedly directing a campaign of mass killing, rape and pillage against the civilians of Tafal. The court's decision was opposed by the African Union, the Arabic League, the Non-Aligned Movement, as well as governments of several Middle Eastern and African nations. The Sudanese conflict in South Kordofan and the Blue Nile in the early 2010s between the Army of Sudan and the Sudan Revolutionary Front started as a dispute over the oil-rich region of Abay in the months leading up to the South Sudanese independence in 2011. After all the oil wars we've had, you all know what oil means to these great powers, and they will go to very great lengths just to get their hands on oil-rich nations and regions. These events would later be known as the Sudanese Intifada, which would end only in 2013 after Al-Bashir promised he would not seek re-election in 2015, but he would go on to break his promise and started seeking re-election in 2015. He won the election through a boycott from the opposition party, who believed the elections would not be free and fair. Voter turnout was at a low 46%, 
I actually applaud the people of Sudan for seeing through the fake illusion of so-called democracy in most of our nations. No one dares to speak out about this because we all know what will happen after that. These acts of election fraud are exactly why we end up having war as a measure to force change. 13 January 2017, US President Barack Obama signed an executive order that lifted many sanctions placed on Sudan and the assets of its government held abroad. The following US President Donald Trump lifted most of the remaining sanctions against the country and its petroleum, export, import and property industries. To what goal did these US and other nations hope to achieve with those sanctions on Sudan? Must innocent civilians suffer because of a few men and women in suits living in a palace? What about the people who starved because of those sanctions meant to punish a politician who, by the way, can afford to smuggle food to his palace with great ease? On 19 December 2018, massive protests began after a government decision to triple the price of goods at a time when the country was suffering a huge shortage of foreign currency and inflation was at 70%. In addition to all this, President al-Bashir, who had been in power for more than 80 years at this point, refused to step down. I'll ask you again, what do you see on your screen? Greed? Power hungry politics? Since the age of the Roman Empire, the story of power, influence and money remains the same. Al-Bashir refusing to step down led to a union of opposition groups to form a united coalition. His government retaliated by arresting more than 800 opposition leaders and protesters, leading to the death of 40 people according to the Human Rights Watch. The innocent always suffer at the hands of the greedy individuals that have forsaken their good side of their human nature in pursuit for money and power. Protests in Sudan came to an end when the forces of freedom and change and the Transitional Government Council signed the July 2019 Political Agreement and the August 2019 Draft Constitutional Declaration. As of August 2021, the country was jointly led by the Chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Abdel Fattah al bohan and Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok. I actually feel sad for what the 45 million people of Sudan have been going through over the past decades. The best I can do is tell their story, a story of their suffering. The Sudanese government announced on the 21st of September 2021 that there was a failed attempt at a military coup led by 40 military officers. One month after the attempted coup, another military coup on 25 October 2021 resulted in the capture of the civilian government, including former Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok. The coup was led by General Abdel Fattah al bohan who then declared a state of emergency. On the 2nd of January 2022, Hamdok announced his resignation from the position of Prime Minister following one of the most deadly protests to date, which led to over 1,000 people including 148 children had been detained for opposing the coup. There were 25 allegations of rape and 87 people had been killed including 11 children. That is quite sad. This is some of the most disgusting stuff I've ever heard. They have no souls. Punishing a person for not supporting your ambitions to rule is one of the biggest cruelties to put an innocent human being through. An internationally brokered plan for a transition to civilian rule was discussed in April 2023, which led to a power struggle growing between army commander and de facto national leader Abdel Fattah al bohan and his deputy Mohammed Hamdan Dadlo, head of the heavily armed paramilitary rapid support force and rapid strike force formed from the Janjaweed militia. Their conflict erupted into intensely violent open battles in the streets of Khartoum between the army and the RSF, with troops, tanks and planes. By the third day, 400 people have been reported killed and at least 3,500 injured according to the United Nations. Among the dead were three workers from the World Food Programme, which led to a suspension of the organization's work in Sudan, despite ongoing hunger afflicting much of the nation. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres demanded immediate justice for the killings and called for an end in the conflict. The African Union and Saudi diplomats headed to Sudan to attempt to mediate a ceasefire. A brief ceasefire of about three to four hours was declared to permit evacuation of the wounded, but the battle raged on with both sides claiming capture of key sites throughout the capital city. We will step down and let the people have power. <laughs> like that would actually happen with these military leaders. There is mostly one key reason why the Sudanese people will not be handed power. Financial interests. Money has a way of driving human beings crazy. Look at my government here in South Africa. The members of the ruling party just can't stop stealing. Allegedly, of course. <laughs> Don't want to go to jail or something. When there is money involved, dictators are born. Hey, so that's it. That's the end of this video, guys. And I, I decided to make this video to thank you for watching. 
this specific video if you've reached this far then that's really amazing i appreciate that and thank you for watching this video just tell me down in the comment section what other topics we can talk about i'm sure there are other fascinating topics that you would love for me and you to actually discuss and talk about i have a lot of topics that i've been planning like i really have a lot of topics that i've been planning so there is a lot that is on the way but if there are already more than a thousand subscribers in the channel which will be unbelievable if we've already reached that number then there's probably a lot of other videos on the channel and there's a lot of interesting stuff there all you gotta do is just check the content out and i don't think i'm even gonna edit this audio i'm just gonna publish it as it is so stay tuned